Okay, um, we're moving on to our third um, scripture reference given by Mr. Melton here. And it is Luke 2, verse 33. And this is what Mr. Melton writ, wrote. And Joseph, highlighting Joseph, and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And then he puts this comment. Here the new versions attack the virgin birth by telling us that Joseph was Christ's father. NIV says the child's father, NASB his father, NRSV the child's father, New World Translation its father. <laughs> New World New World Translation. Ah, anyway, a um, couple of things about this verse. Uh, this particular verse is actually listed in Bruce Metzger's a textual commentary on the Greek New Testament second edition, and um, you know over the difference of the word either father or Joseph. And uh, he says, in order to safeguard the doctrine of the virgin birth of Jesus, uh, the word father, I get, it's written in Greek, and, and you know, anyway, um, and it's the Greek letters, it's not, you know, the uh, transliteration of it, so I can read it. Uh, anyway, uh, it's the word for father. Let me highlight and double check here. Yeah, father. The word father was replaced by Joseph. And a variety of witnesses, some of them ancient, old old Latin, Gothic, and the Diatessaron. Other witnesses added uh, this word. Let me here or there after after mother, either for stylistic balance with, and it's got a Greek phrase. Anyway, such as what's uh, in um, uh, Elif and L157, <clears throat> or by transfer when Father was replaced by Joseph. Besides a number of singular readings, Joseph is an obvious conflation. Okay, so he's just saying that, you know based on the manuscript evidence, looking at both old ones and, and on up, that it appears that, uh, well, he says it's obvious, uh, that it's a conflation. We had talked about that once before whenever I was talking about the four different family types of manuscripts, that um, a lot of times the uh, the scribes would try to harmonize passages here and there and so forth uh, to to polish, polish it up. Anyway, regardless, I'm fixing to show you why it doesn't matter either way. It doesn't. It really doesn't. The King James only material is trying to say, well, they're denying, you know, they're attacking, they're trying to make Joseph be Christ's father, because they say uh, the child's father. Okay, are you sitting down? Are you ready? I'm going to show you why this argument is outright. I want to say stupid, but stupid has such a bad connotation, so. It's outright naive and uh, silly to say that this is a legitimate argument. And let me show you why. <clears throat> In the facsimile of 1611, which you can pull your own modern King James out if you want to, and read along with me. Okay, we're in Luke 2.33. Jump down, if you will, in that same chapter. Jump down with me to verse 48. Luke 2.48 in your King James. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. So see here, in verse 48 of chapter 2, the King James even refers to Joseph as his father. So, I don't think I need to say any more about that passage. Um, let's go to the next one. 1 Timothy 3.16 1 Timothy 3.16 First Timothy 
three sixteen. The reason I'm not prepared is because I didn't know I was going to get through with that one in time to do another one. And just to, so you don't have to watch so many videos. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stop. So there's no sense in you sitting there watching me flip around through my materials to try to pull together some things here. Uh, so come back for the next one. First Timothy, First Timothy 3.16.